news. Uh, Robert Mugabe has uh, resigned. The Zimbabwe president comes to a surprise to many. The 93-year-old handed over his resignation to the Speaker of the Zimbabwean Parliament. The surprise announcement came as lawmakers debated an impeachment motion against the 93-year-old leader in a joint sitting of Parliament. Mugabe had previously refused to resign despite last week's military takeover and days of protest against his rule. He has been in power since independence in 1980. Earlier, a crowd gathered outside Zimbabwe parliament ahead of the impeachment motion being tabled against Mugabe by the members of the ruling party. This after cabinet ministers refuted a call by President Robert Mugabe to attend a cabinet meeting. ZANU-PF chief whip said ministers heeded a party directive to stop the cabinet meeting and instead attend a party caucus to discuss impeaching Mugabe. And to talk more on this uh, breaking news, we are joined now uh, by an and 7 reporter, Frank Chukohore. A very good uh, uh, evening to you, Frank. Just give us some more information as to what happened, what transpired in Parliament today, and uh, how did uh, the President uh, resign? President Mugabe has just uh, resigned. Uh, the announcement was made by the Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Mudenda, as, well, uh, as the impeachment uh, motion was being moved in the lower house uh, of parliament. Uh, as I speak to you right now, uh, there, there is a carnival atmosphere in the streets of Harare as people are celebrating the fall of what they call a dictator who has ruled Zimbabwe for the past 37 years. That if an impeachment motion was set against the president, then it would have been a very long process. What is next for Ozanu PF and Zimbabwe now that the president has actually decided to resign? The problem now, the problem that we now have is that uh, we are going to be having a constitutional crisis because uh, the constitution of Zimbabwe clearly says that uh, the last person to act as president of the country takes over on an interim basis for 90 days. Uh, if, you, if, if we are going to uh, go back to history, we will find that uh, vice, former Vice President Emerson Mnangago was expelled about two weeks ago, and the Constitution uh, says that um, the last uh, person to act as president uh, has to take over, and the last person to act as president was Munangagwa. But Munangagwa is now out of government, and his co-deputy, Peleke Zelam was also expelled by the ruling party central committee. So what we now have is a constitutional crisis. Whoever uh, has been seconded by the ruling party to take over from President Robert Mugabe uh, will have a problem in terms of assuming office, because, uh, l like I said earlier, uh, the constitution is very clear. So uh, we now wonder how uh, Emerson Mnangagwa, who was appointed by the ruling party central committee, is going to take over. So we have a clear constitutional crisis here. You, you do say that you have a, a constitutional crisis there in Zimbabwe, but uh, this is what ZANU-PF wanted, this is what the people of Zimbabwe was uh, wanting the whole week. Do you think that this is an achievement for Zimbabwe? This is indeed an, a historical moment uh, in Zimbabwe. Well, the Zimbabwe is now that uh, the dictator so, uh, has fallen. Uh, like uh, so many people have been saying uh, in the streets of the capital. But uh, we have a situation where uh, no one will be able to succeed Mugabe um, in the interim, given uh, the constitutional challenges. And so, like I said earlier, I wait to see uh, what is going to happen because uh, no one can eventually take over from uh, Mugabe. Of course, it, it, it will be a country who is, uh, which has no leader. It's like a, 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 a headless chicken, so to speak. Well, Frank, if we can get your location at the moment, you're in Harare, but are you indeed at Parliament or are you somewhere where you can see celebrations taking place? Because we do have live visuals coming in from Zimbabwe at the moment from outside Parliament, it seems like. 
and also uh, people celebrating there, holding their placards, shouting in joy. Um, we can also go across to uh, ANN7 anchor Audrey Echamando, who is also in Zimbabwe at the moment. She was actually in Parliament as uh, President Robert Mugabe resigned. A very good evening to you, Audrey. Thank you so much for joining us uh, live here on ANN7. Now, please just give us the input. What happened actually in Parliament? You were there. You witnessed as it happened such an historical moment. Just give us some of the details. A very good evening to you, Steph, and to our viewers. Well, I can tell you it's definitely a good evening for the people of Zimbabwe that have been calling for President Robert Mugabe to step down. I was in the uh, Parliament for the makeshift of Parliament sitting today that happened to be the Harare International Conference Centre as it had been moved there as uh, um, uh, the two houses had to sit from the Senate to the Parliament. The National Assembly was not, uh, the chambers were not big enough to house everyone. Just about 15 to 20 minutes ago, the um, Speaker of the House read out President Robert Mugabe's resignation letter to the crowd and to members of Parliament who erupted in, in jubilation. Um, look, this, this was not really expected as we had thought President Robert Mugabe will be fighting, you know, and holding on to power as much as he can following his um, uh, speech, uh, non-resignation speech that everybody thought would actually come out uh, to the country and resign. Of course, an impeachment process would not have been ideal for President Robert Mugabe as that is associated um, with uh, non-immunity with regards to any crimes of humanity that he may have committed. So the streets of Harare, as I'm speaking to you, I'm sure you can hear in the background, scooters, uh, you know, people are driving around, dancing, they're excited. They never thought it would happen this soon, um, that this process would be long, but it appears President Robert Mugabe has uh, decided to put uh, people out of their memory, so to speak, and just uh, um, uh, go out in some kind of a dignified manner, so to speak. Well, Audrey, you are probably outside Parliament right now. I do see people holding their placards saying, MPs, you are our salvation. And people celebrating and just, you know, enjoying the historic moment that has just happened in Zimbabwe. Do you think that today when there was only two MPs or few MPs that joined, uh, that went to a meeting Robert Mugabe called, do you think that that also had a final breaking point for the president to say that it's time to resign? Well, I, I can tell you the people that are outside are rejoicing. I, I suppose people are not really thinking what happens next now that President Robert Mugabe, the constitutional crisis, um, which I'm sure your analysts were alluding to a few minutes ago, what happens next? That is the big question of the day, but it appears people on the ground are not too concerned about that. They have one motive, they, want, they have one objective, and that was to get the President Robert Mugabe to step down, and he seems to have done that. Uh, going forward, you know, it'll be curious to see how um, he will be replaced and uh, how the vice presidents will come into play with one of them who was asked by the President, uh, Munangagwa, who since refused to come back um, to say this is an issue between you and the people of Zimbabwe. And it appears they have settled their scores. President Robert Mugabe and the people of Zimbabwe have been separated. But this is a president who's, um, whose grip on power has spanned over 35 years, 37 years to be specific. Um, and, 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 you know, it is very difficult to separate Zimbabwe from Robert Mugabe, right? Mm. Because he had been president for so many years. So it, it's a very, I suppose Zimbabweans find themselves in a, in a position where they don't really know what, what to do now, because this is all they've ever known, having President Robert Mugabe as the president. Mm. Definitely. And also now, what do you think is going to happen next? Do we see Mnangagwa coming back to Zimbabwe after saying that he wants his safety to be promised to him? Then only he will come back. Do you think after the resignation of Robert Mugabe that he might come back to Zimbabwe? Well, Mnangagwa had set out conditions, um, Stefani, with regard to how he comes back. Remember, his security had been stripped from him, which is unprecedented for any vice president of Zimbabwe or, or any other country, really. You know, when we leave office, you still have your security with you. Um, you still feel protected, so to speak, as any high-profile uh, person should be. But that was stripped off Mnangagwa. And the invitation from... Uh, uh, president, I don't know if I should call him former president of Zimbabwe already, Robert Mugabe. Um, you know, that was one of his, his issues. To say. I don't know if, if protection is guaranteed. And until that is settled, then perhaps I can come back. The, the other vice president, um, that will be in poor call, is, I suppose, I don't know, we'll have to look what the Constitution says. Yeah. This is uncharted water for Zimbabwe, you know, so they would have to really see how they interpret the law with regards to the Constitution to make sure that the right thing is done going forward. 
Well, Audrey, please do stay on the line with us. So just uh, reiterating, we have the live visuals coming through to you from Zimbabwe, where this historical moment has taken place there just a few minutes ago. Uh, Robert Mugabe has decided to resign as the president of Zimbabwe. But also joining us on the phone line is Lovmo Chukchuka, who is the PDP provincial spokesperson. A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us here on ANN7. So just give us uh, your views or your feelings towards Robert Mugabe resigning today. Yeah, it's uh, thanks very much uh, to all viewers, and uh, it's a happy time now. Uh, people are happy, and this news has just come like a bomb, and everyone is jubilating, and everyone is jumping all over the street uh, in Harare, and everyone in diaspora, they are jumping in their homes and calling their friends, sending messages that uh, finally the man has resigned and it's a great news to the Zimbabwean people it's a relief to the Zimbabwean people that they have come out of the bondage and also the Zanupi of people that they've been following Robert Mugabe under forceful uh, pretense that they wanted to follow him but they were just uh, trying to protect themselves from being killed or so they are now relieved that Democracy has come to, to the nation of Zimbabwe, and we now need to focus how do we go from here. And this is the first step that we need to take with reflection of what has just happened. It is a big lesson to us as Zimbabwean that unity is very important, and being one people, one voice, we can achieve a lot in Zimbabwe. Now, Lovmo, we did have Frank Chigohore on the line earlier. He said that Zimbabwe is now in a constitutional crisis. Uh, what is your views on that? Do you think that the Zimbabwe is indeed now in a constitutional crisis? And what will happen from now on forwards as to electing a new president? I would like to, 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 to put it clear to the people of the world. Um, uh, Zimbabweans will never be in a constitutional crisis. Mm -hmm. I think the interpretation of the constitution from different people who seem to be like more, more uh, articulated with uh, politics um, um, constitution are trying to mislead people with different information and views. L look at the picture right now. This is a new beginning. This is a new way. There is a need of going back and sit down and people are going to do everything democratically. And there is going to be in a look into the Constitution, though we cannot change it in a day, but there is going to be an understanding between the parties, like what we have seen in the afternoon, that political parties from different all corners of life, they come to agree that this is a new beginning. We are going to sit down and talk about this. How would we go forward and how we govern our government uh, forward so that we can now reach and constitute a new constitution that gives a true democracy to Zimbabwe. So we, sh we don't need to worry about uh, what is going to this and what is going to happen tomorrow uh, according to the constitution, but understanding the unity and the need to redress the things. That is what is going to take place and that is going to be the lead that we need now a true democratic Zimbabwe. And without that, then we are going to be uh, fall down. There's a lot of things that is going to hinder according to the constitution, but there is going to be a talk through. Mm. How do we go forward from there? As, as leaders, we need now a way forward. We cannot be uh, uh, have another stumbling block because of the constitution when we have seen how bad it has destroyed our nation. Then we can go around it and move forward. Then we can create another uh, new constitution that really supports and also uh, gives a way to true to, to democratic processes in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it's going to be a national transition authority. Whether people, they don't like it or not, that's the only way that is going to happen. Inclusive government from all different political parties so that we can now have a soft landing starting for, uh, from the beginning and have our investor uh, confidence so that Zimbabwe can start to rise up again. There is so many ways we can do that other than just putting fear in the people that conscience say this and conscience say this. Yes, we have to respect it, but we have got a crisis now. This after Mugabe era, what do we do as Zimbabweans? We are united. We are going to make it happen.
Mm, definitely. Now, also looking at what transpired this past week, and it seems that Robert Mugabe was holding on to the power as president and also not yes. uh, resigning at the deadline that the military yes. or that ZANU PF gave him. So, mm. what do you think today drew the final line for President Robert Mugabe? Or do you think that this was in his plan all along to have the power and then to um, use that power to actually say, I will not be fired, I will not be impeached, I will remove myself, I will resign? Things. Well, let me put it clear this way. Mugabe was fooled by, 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 by the crowd that he was seeing on interfaces, on rallies that were organized by uh, the commissariat, uh, Kasukuere and Jonathan Moyo, my, my, uh, Grace Mugabe. People were forced to come to the rallies. Mm -hmm. And Mugabe was fooled that he has got following. He is liked. He is an alpha and omega of his time in, in ruling. So when this thing started, it could not click well in his mind that really people could be against him. In his mind, he thought that people who also right, try to rise against those people whom he think that are breaking the law, but not knowing that the people that he was also eating with, they, were not, they had no power to challenge him. And this really shows that these people, they've actually allowed Mugabe to be, to be uh, more powerful than any other person in Zimbabwe. And that made them so weaker that even if they could challenge him, they would be silenced quickly. Because, and Mugabe realized that long back time that he needed to create a, uh, intelligence around him so that whoever who challenges his position will be silenced quickly. So this is the reason why he thought that no one is above above. The, 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 the power that whatever he says he can he is going to happen. So it was now that he realized that everyone he thought that were on his side, they've actually turned against him. Last week, uh, 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 the, 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 the Secretary of Information in his cabinet was the one announcing that they fired Munagagwa and is also the one that is also announcing that he is resigning. So you can see the play around of the things within his uh, circles that he was not liked, but he was forcing people to, to follow him. And many people around him were following him for personal benefits. It was not for the interest of the nation. So that's why he has realized that, no, I'm alone here and there's no way I'm going. I, should, I must resign. And there was no way. It was a dead end. And also, we can see that people are celebrating outside Parliament uh, or through the blocks from Parliament. Don't know exactly where it is, but we can see that they are really happy with uh, this uh, news that came out just now. It is indeed a historical moment. Also, talking to our reporter there and to our anchor that was uh, in Zimbabwe this following or this past week, they said that business continued as usual. People did not seem that they were that upset or that they were that distraught by the idea that the president was first held up uh, by the military. Do you think that they were not expecting anything to happen from this point for Robert Mugabe? Do you think that they were just expecting that it will be business as usual and he will still remain president? No, uh, people were, yes. Uh, partly people were confused and uh, some they were still confident that because uh, uh, that he's going to resign. Mm. Those who understand and those who are interpreting the, the constitution were busy confusing other people on the social media. Mm. People needed, to, I mean, a lot of people knew that after that, the march, and what they've seen, what happened in the Central Committee within the ZAN PF, people were aware that there is no way Mugabe is going to go around it and try to come back to power. His power was stripped of starting from, his, uh, from the party. So, what was why people were calm? Like I said, people in Zimbabwe are peaceful they sometimes give a chance to the processes to happen. So it's, they were anxious, they, they were waiting to see the processes to happen, like what was happening, the impeachment uh, processes happening in, in, in the parliament. So the people of Zimbabwe were patiently waiting, and everyone knew that whatever the day is going to come, we're still going to rejoice. But let us give the, 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 uh, the, the, the parliament to do their job, and we are, if, if not, we are still going to march again and try to show him that we really don't want you in office again. You need to move out. Everyone was prepared. And 
for today's announcement, it was not prepared for people to receive this, but people were now asking, uh, how long does it take for the impeachment to, to be processed? Mm-hmm. When can we expect the day that uh, the, 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 the parliament will announce that Mugabe is no, is no longer power? So from him, he's been watching from back doors, and I think he was seeing what was happening every day, and advisors from, mm-hmm. from all corners of his uh, circles were advising him that this is the development, and he had come to an, a, a decision that, uh, no, I, I need to, to give in, because there's no way he's going to hold on to power without mm-hmm. people loving him. So it was, it was a dead end for him. So we're happy for that. We really want to thank God, God's hand mostly, because we couldn't do it alone. Yes. It is inspired by the God's hand. So Zimbabweans are Christians, they understand. Many people were praying behind this, and it has inspired mm-hmm. everyone to have courage and, and, and confidence that there is no way this uh, uh, man who has got a hard heart killed so many people would be left alone to go ahead like that. Thank you, Love, more for joining us and giving us uh, your inputs on the story. Now, also joining us is More Life, a Mapuche ZANU PF deputy spokesperson. Very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us here on ANN7. Let's get your reaction as ZANU PF. Let's get the reaction on uh, President Robert Mugabe actually resigning today in Parliament. Yeah, thank you very much. As one PF, we want to applaud Comrade Mugabe for accepting to resign finally. We want to thank the Zimbabwean people for calmness, for the, for the peace they maintained in our country. We want to thank everyone, the opposition, uh, the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, some PF members, members of parliament, everyone who worked together to see a new, a new country coming up. So we really appreciate what has happened. And now, as an PF, we are now looking forward to a new dispensation. This, we have finished celebrating. We are now focusing on the new status quo. What do we do to change the economy of the country? People have suffered a lot. So many people are in diaspora. We are now looking forward to, 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 to create a good economy that would be sustainable for the people of Zimbabwe. We really appreciate what happened, and we thank God for where he has brought us today. Well, Morlaf, we have heard uh, some issues of saying uh, that you're in a constitutional crisis. Now, what will ZANU-PF do from this point forward? Do you have a plan as to what steps to take next now that the president has resigned? Yes, we've got a plan. Uh, we are going to our extraordinary congress in the next two and a half weeks. Mm. That's where we are going to usher in our new our new leader. Currently, uh, uh, Comrade Emerson Munangagwa has been appointed the first secretary and president of ZANU PF. Then we are going to ratify that on our extraordinary congress uh, on the 12th of December. Then from there, uh, we will prepare. For, for the elections. Actually, we are going to be given the next direction at the Congress. Mm. Well, thank you, Morlai, for joining us on the phone line. Uh, that is Morlai, he is the deputy spokesperson of uh, ZANU PF. Let's also move along now. Mark Bafal, African Diaspora Forum chairperson, joins us on the phone line. A very good evening to you, sir. Thank you also for joining us here on ANN7. Let's get your reaction to President Robert Mugabe resigning in Parliament today. Look, uh, uh, our first reaction is to thank the millions of uh, Zimbabweans who were referring and wanting to uh, uh, open and read their constitution since last week. Uh, the same scenario in some countries, and I will take the example of uh, uh, Ivory Coast in West Africa, the same scenario killed 3,000 people. So, so <laughs> we want to use this opportunity to thank the millions of Zimbabweans. And we want to thank the millions of uh, Southern Africans who supported the whole process until today. We were very worried yesterday after 12 noon when the president didn't resign because a very single and simple move can cause a chaos. And we were 
as the African Diaspora Forum, we were very worried. We want to use this opportunity to thank uh, the former president, uh, President uh, Mugabe, to say, uh, you now listen to the, to the people. Thank you very much. And uh, we want to encourage the new leadership of this country to be inclusive. They should be able to form a government of the people. They must give up their own interests. They must work for that country, rebuild the country, give confidence to investors, and uh, show us the image which we know of that country years before 1980. And uh, uh, for, for them to regain the confidence of Africa, they must, they must be open to the rest of the continent. I know Zimbabweans will embrace everyone. And that's why we are saying that part of the continent, everyone should come. And uh, maybe tomorrow when uh, the two presidents, President uh, Jacob Zuma and uh, 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 the president of Angola, when they arrive, they should go and console uh, the former president, President Mugabe, and uh, uh, tell him that uh, life is not stopped. Um, uh, Zimbabwe should continue. Uh, for him not being in power doesn't mean that uh, the country is finished. There are new bloods, and uh, that's what we are looking at. And uh, thank you for all Africans for assisting that country. And also taking a look at Zimbabwe and their relationship with other nations in Africa, do you think that this will have an immense impact on their relations with the rest of Africa? And also this is a historical moment, so what do you see happening forward for Zimbabwe from today on? Look, uh, everyone was criticizing that country for its, its economy falling apart, for the people of the country running away, running away from a, a dictatorship, today it is a new page. And I think everyone should come and contribute the right, the new beginning of a new era. Uh, Zimbabwe should uh, face uh, its destiny. And uh, its destiny, as from today, Africans should come in, and help the country write the destiny, help of the people of Zimbabwe rebuild the economy, help the people of Zimbabwe embrace each other, forgetting tribalism, because this is the one thing that uh, I think that country has to deal with, is that people are talking more about the tribes. And I think we should encourage Zimbabweans to work together as one people for them to be able to have a strong and a stronger country. This will be done with the assistance of the whole, the, the rest of the 53 countries in our continent. They cannot do it al alone. Africans will assist them. People could not come in because they had a dictator there. But now it is the closure, the, the closure of that page. We should all come in and assist writing a new beginning. We do just want to thank Mark Bafal, Africa Diaspora Forum, for joining us there on the phone line, giving us their input on this historic moment that happened. If you have just joined us, Robert Mugabe has today resigned in Parliament as the President of Zimbabwe. Also, just going across to our news anchor in Zimbabwe, Audrey Chimwanda. I hope that you can still hear me, Audrey. Just give us some more information as to where you are now and what the reactions are coming in as to the resignation of Robert Mugabe. Stefani, you'll have to forgive me if there's a lot of noise in my background, but the streets of Harare have erupted 
in jubilation. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a peak hour. People are driving home uh, from their uh, various jobs, and everyone is just excited. They're parked in the streets. Some have jumped out of their cars. They're dancing. I'm sure you can hear the, the hooters as well. And um, you know, it's just a very surreal moment, you know, if you were one of the members that were in the gallery in Parliament today as uh, the Speaker of the House read out uh, uh, Robert, President Robert Mugabe's resignation letter. And I'll tell you, there's one of the sayings that have become synonymous with a lot of Zimbabweans, also with members of Parliament, that we heard throughout the session today is Ngayende, Ngayende, which, which is Shana for, which is Shana, and it translates to English to say, he must go now, he must go now. And it appears that the voices of Zimbabweans through their legislators that they voted for in their constituencies were heard and they were activated in Parliament today and the resignation that they had been crying for came through. It would be interesting to find out the reactions from the remote areas, like your rural areas, which are known to be Zanopia's stronghold, where there's a different generation than the one that you see in urban areas. These are you know, people that have always known Mugabe from when he became president. These are people that are enamored and charmed by President Robert Mugabe from when they were very young and when he was, you know, during the generation struggle, who have really always been loyal to Mugabe, how they are reacting right now. But as of the urban areas, it's a really all happy days at the moment. Or did you stay on the line with us? And we can, yes, please stay on the line with us. We'll come back to you speaking to Cindy and, and thank you to Stephanie Janssen van Fieren. Of course, we disrupt normal programming uh, to announce uh, the resignation and also to analyze what happens next. But I think uh, for the better part of today, it will be largely celebrations uh, all round. And Owen Magosha is a political analyst uh, and attorney or lawyer. He joins us on the line. Good evening to you and thanks so much for joining us, uh, Owen. Of course, it is uh, the beginning, it seems, uh, of a new era for Zimbabwe. Good evening and indeed it is a celebration moment. The people in Zimbabwe are so happy and they are joyful. This is a moment that people have lived their whole life waiting for. If you see the young generation, they were born with one president, they were born Gabe being there and they're already reaching their almost 40 years with still the same president, whilst many countries has rotated as far as six, seven. This is something that we say congratulations to democracy, congratulations to peace in Zimbabwe, congratulations to the citizens for their unity and for their commission to removing the president. You can find that indeed the next step for Zimbabwe is to proceed the next step for Zimbabwe is to proceed. It is for the uh, it's for ZANU PF to chart the way call the chart uh, the way forward. Since they are preparing for the return of Emerson Mnangagwa, he has already been appointed uh, at the Congress, and the, his appointment is waiting ratification at the ZANU PF Congress. So yes, congratulations to Zimbabwe. And now we can find that Zimbabwe is so happy because there is a president who has been power for almost four decades and he are doing some draconian laws that is oppressed the masses and now people are celebrating not just his removal but there is hope for change there is hope for peace there is hope for policy formulation there is hope for reform electoral reform there is hope for many things in zimbabwe this moment and indeed it is a great time and it is a defining moment for the future of the country and where they are going next Oh, and it is a tangible hope that you're talking about in the sense that for so long there has been uh, strife uh, in Zimbabwe economically and people uh, generally living under the breadline, a lack of investment or even infrastructure development. In the meantime, uh, procedurally, obviously, that, uh, uh, that, that process has to be observed. You spoke about uh, having to ratify the appointment of uh, Emerson uh, Mnemgangwa and uh, going forward, how long before we see meaningful change? Uh, being implemented in Zimbabwe? I think uh, for change to exist in Zimbabwe, number one, there must, be, um, there must be policy formulation. They must change their policies, and then the environment must be friendly for investors to come back. And of course, the main important thing and the biggest responsibility that we are putting to test to ZANU-PF being the ruling party is the anti-corruption stance which they have used 
to gather momentum in ousting President Robert Mugabe and the G40 cabal. So they are coming as people who are anti-corruption. And we are looking forward to see them living to their way that indeed they detest uh, the corruption in the country. So that will be a big test to see are they going really to live up to that task. And secondly, you find that um, going forward, uh, ZANU-PF is now in the process of decentralizing power. There was one center of power on President Robert Gabriel Mugabe, but now moving forward, they have learned their lesson that it's too risky to concentrate so much power on an individual. So now there's a process already to decentralize power, and of course, uh, President Emerson Mnangagwa, the incoming president, uh, will not have as much power as President Mugabe. And that is indeed already a sign and a hope for the future for Zimbabwe, to say indeed, there will not be one center of power, but democracy will reign. Please stay on the line, Owen Magosha, political analyst and lawyer. In studio, we joined by Jackie Shandu, political commentator, Rebili Zodetsi, political commentator, and Walter Lukuleni, PAC Secretary of Publicity. Good evening to you, and thanks so much for joining us. Just very quick reactions. I mean, there's the adage that says it's not important how you start, it's how you finish the race. The legacy of Robert Mugabe, how he will be remembered. Yes. Uh, I, I think to me, I can say so much because I observe so much from him. And uh, I would say he has fought the just war. Let's, let's put it that way because how he fought, it was really a challenge to the man who was really running what was called Rhodesia in the name of Iron Smith. He fought with that man because that man didn't want to release power. But now I want to thank the, the support of ZANU PF under Mugabe and Zebra support under Joshua Nkomo, which they formed a front and to fight the enemy so that the people of Rhodesia, the, the people of Zimbabwe, they can become free. Mm. I'm talking about his, his, his legacy in later years, uh, Mr. Lokolele. Maybe you, you can give us a sense of whether all of the good things have now essentially been swept away with what had transpired in, 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 Actually, in, in, I was in coming recent years. To, I was coming to that. You, you, you need to also, you know, that's why I'm saying that, Cindy, what you need to do, we look at it, it, economics and the politics. They move together. You cannot separate the two. You understand? Our base, which is Zimbabwe and South Africa, will, will be over a period, will be affected by that because we are expressing our money in terms of dollar. You understand? So if the people who are in control of us under the usage of the dollar, and if they feel that they cannot follow what you are doing, they will re automatically uh, depreciate your money to nothing, as it happens to, to, to Zimbabwe. And we are not exonerated as South Africans because we are also expressing our money in terms of their dollar. So they will always dictate to us what to do. That's what is happening now. That is why Mugabe was seen now as the person who's out of the way because the Moody's were full time there. They even, they, they, they even went to an extent of making sure that the dollar is worth nothing. Yeah, uh, Mr. Lokuleni, in, 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 in your view, whether Robert Mugabe had been the embodiment of what we see Zimbabwe to be today, the basket case is supposed to be the breadbasket of the world, would you say that his legacy indeed will be that of the latter years uh, or should, should history be preserved? Thanks, Cindy, for the invite. I, I think the, 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 there's a question of who will be writing the history. If their history is written by the people of Africa, they would not forget the supreme sacrifice that Robert Mugabe played in the, in, in the freedom of the continent specifically, uh, but also of Zimbabwe, because he played a, a, a very significant role. Therefore, the legacy of, of, of uh, Robert Mugabe will depend on who is writing the history. If it is written by the imperialist forces, yes, they will look at, at the latter years and look at what their outcome is, as uh, my colleague says here, mm -hmm. how they impacted uh, on the economy of Zimbabwe so that it creates a situation where you cannot actually uh, fulfill the mandate of, yeah. the of the African people. They will use that to show his legacy. But if the history is written by us as Africans, we will never forget the role that he has played. As the PAC specifically, we, 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 we can never forget that he honored one of our leaders who is buried today at the, at the Heroes Acre.
buried as a hero when he was banished from the from his country of his birth. All right, well, Walter, just hold the thought. 0115422186, taking your calls. We're also on social media at ANN7 TV. Uh, Zano PF spokesperson uh, Kennedy Mandaza joins us on the line. And Lexon in Botswana, we see you as well. We'll come to you shortly. Uh, Mr. Mandaza, good evening to you and thanks so much for joining us. Earlier on, we're speaking to uh, Edwin Magosha, who was, who was talking about the uh, dangers of centralizing power around one personality. Just uh, the lessons from uh, having uh, President Robert Mugabe for 37 years in, in office. What would you, you say are the greatest uh, learnings there? Uh, thank you so much. Um, it's a great day for Zimbabwe and also equally a great day for ZANU-PF. Um, the concept of um, uh, one center of power, we have learned a great deal that power should not be centralized on one particular individual. Power should be given to almost everyone. It should be decentralized. And when it is centralized, it leads to an individual appointing and disappointing at will. And this has, it has become the order of, for the day in ZANU-PF as well as in government. And as ZANU-PF, in the Central Committee meeting, one of the resolutions that came out was that uh, we are going to remove this concept of one center of power and this will be affirmed during the uh, extraordinary congress that is taking place um, in a few weeks' time. But um, regardless of that, we are so grateful to the work that the uh, President Mugabe did for Zimbabwe. He played his part, like what one of the speakers said, he ran his race, and ran it so strongly, but unfortunately... He did not finish it as strongly as he should have done because of a number of things which were as a result of influence, we believe, from those that have now surrounded him. All right. And, and Mr. Mandaza, just speak us, uh, talk us through the clandestine meetings of engaging with uh, President Robert Mugabe, or now erstwhile, the concessions that had to be made to broker this deal. The... the Discussions that were taking place behind doors, which were being um, undertaken through the mediation of uh, uh, Father Fidelis Mukonori, um, they have remained a closely guarded secret to those that were in the meetings. We have been told a number of times that there were great steps that were being made and concessions had been made and agreements had been made until as, as early as this morning, uh, we had heard that... Um, uh, President Mugabe was now talking to uh, Comrade Emerson Munangagwa. And all this was happening behind the doors. And I would like to believe that uh, it is through these behind doors negotiations where President Mugabe made it clear to those that the other route for him to leave power was to tender his resignation to, to the Speaker of Parliament, which is also a legal route that could have been followed. The, the other thing that I also want to say is that um, the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, like any other Zimbabwean, would want to see President Mugabe have a safe exit and would want to make sure that his security is guaranteed. And all that he has been given, and we believe he will rest and rest well during these last days that uh, he will be on uh, 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 taking uh, leave from the work that he has done for a very long time. Mm. All right, Mr. Mandazo, just please stay on the line. Jackie Shandu, just your view. It sounds very much as a, a soft, cushioned exit, if you like, uh, and whether in your view this is what Zimbabwe needs at the moment as opposed to going on a witch hunt and uh, asking, calling for accountability or for uh, President uh, Robert Mugabe uh, to, you know, to either uh, account for, for his sins, as it were. Thanks, and good evening to you and good evening to the viewers. The answer to your question largely depends on how the Zimbabweans themselves analyze their pressing uh, political and economic challenges. It really rests on how they diagnose all the, you know, sort of uh, problems that they are faced with. Is it, do they attribute, do they ascribe their challenges, the unemployment levels and the economic uh, catastrophe to Robert Mugabe, or are they able to 
reflect quite accurately and unemotionally to say, actually they had a, what was known as the breadbasket of the African continent, a thriving economy, uh, one of the best education systems. These are all the achievements uh, under President Robert Mugabe. In addition to that, they are on the, the only nation in black Africa that has had their land being given back to them. And that's where the problems begin with Zimbabwe, especially with the interests. We know like South Africa, Zimbabwe was a, a, a settler a, a column, right? So you had whites living here, taking their uh, living, sharing the land with, 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 with the occupant. So the moment there's that decision to say the land is going to be taken away from the settler white minority to the majority, that is actually where the problems begin for Zimbabwe. And that is where President Mugabe moves from being you know, dined at Buckingham Palace and being knighted. President Mugabe was knighted by, by Britain. He's supposed to be called Sir Robert Mugabe. But when he changes his approach and says, it's time now to really restore the dignity of my people through giving back their land, through the indigenization of the economy, suddenly the narrative of the West even changes on who Mugabe is, what he's doing, he becomes the monster, he becomes all sorts of things. So there's been this well-orchestrated demonization of President Robert Mugabe and the ZANU-PF since the day the land was taken from the white minority and redistributed to the black majority. So I'm saying it is up to the people who are now in the streets celebrating the demise of the one man that said it cannot go on unchallenged this landlessness of Zimbabweans in Zimbabwe. All right, let's get a, another perspective where we welcome uh, the uh, COPA, Congress of the People leader, Musiwa Lekwata. Re Lekwata, thanks so much for joining us. Of course, we heard uh, your endorsement, as it were, of uh, the resignation of Robert Mugabe. Just your reaction, especially going forward, because we know with change come discomfort and comes uh, its own sets of challenges. Uh, what, in your view, is likely to happen next? Hello, okay. Hello. Hi, can you hear Hello. me? Yes. Uh, I was just asking, you know, with a change, it does come some adjustment. There's likely to be some uh, challenges going forward, albeit that it's such a, uh, a euphoric and, and uh, joyful moment. Well, look, let me say first and foremost that it is not for those of us who are not Zimbabweans to... Uh, dictate to the Zimbabweans as to how to deal and resolve the problems of their country. However, we, there are still issues on which we may express opinions. And our first opinion is that it's a welcome thing that uh, this transition is happening without bloodshed. That uh, he has ultimately acquiesced to the decision of the majority and especially of government, of the ruling party. The second thing, however, is that across the world, uh, people must be wondering how they are going to review uh, the legacy of Mugabe, especially some of the atrocities of the early years of his government and uh, subsequently uh, the scattering of Zimbabweans across the region of Southern Africa and the diaspora in general. Those are issues that only Zimbabweans can consider. I think the country will continue to face questions from the international community as to whether the violation of the rights of citizens of that country under Mugabe's rule uh, can be left unquestioned. We, we're going to have to thank you very much. That's our COP leader, Mosiwa Lekwata, joining us on the phone. And uh, thank you so much to our viewers as well who are calling in and waiting patiently. We start with Lexan in Botswana. Good evening to you and thanks for joining us. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? 
I'm okay, and uh, I'm sure we are very, very happy, and there's jubilation in the turnaround of uh, things or events in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. The first thing that I wanted to say is um, actually the unity that has prevailed, and we have seen that it have went with no uh, bloodshed, as we normally see in other regions that uh, actually get to such situations, which is very good and uh, we are actually looking forward for a new page that is going to be opened and uh, unit prevailing. It's actually a 1980 situation uh, that is prevailing in Zimbabwe at the current moment, where everyone is actually anticipating to see and revive what has been down to start growing. Because every Zimbabwean now is looking forward to see things as they were in 1980. And uh, I hope and uh, uh, think that it's not going to be in vain for everyone's anticipation that uh, we are going to see things changing in the better way. Yeah, a renaissance a in the true where... sense of the word. Alexon, thanks so much for your time. Uh, Paul in Germiston, good evening to you. Hi, madam. Hi, how are you, sir? I am so happy. I can I just hear it in your voice. Yeah, true. I am so jubilant. It is. Uh, it's like uh, we are just uh, we just got our independence. Mm. You know, uh, being in an independent country, which is claimed to be independent, and you are not free to say out uh, your own thoughts about. Uh, how the government is being is, is, is being conducted, how things are being conducted in the government, and you are so afraid to say it in the street. You know, such a country which is claimed to have independence, and you are not allowed to do that. Imagine uh, a country where it's only the senior of, officials of the government who benefit from the abundance of resources in our country. Can you believe that? Can you believe it, Paul? Thank you so much for your uh, contribution. And, and that's, uh, that's largely the concern, that will this trickle through to improve the lives of uh, Zimbabweans in general and, and not necessarily the uh, bourgeoisie or political elite? You see, uh, Cindy, my, my concern that we hope that from here onwards the, the life of the people of Zimbabwe will be improved. But I would say it from this background, to, to Mugabe to act the way he has acted, it was based on the Lancaster Agreement from 1980, the agreement which they have signed that in, after 20 years' time, Britain will intervene in the terms of buying the land from these white people on behalf of the Zimbabwe. Okay. But what happened in 92, year 2000? They never responded. The England never responded to that. And that, from that day, that is when the economy of, of Zimbabwe turned around. Because he, he even used the words, Britain, keep what belongs to you, I'll keep what belongs to Zimbabwe. You can understand that the, the, the old man was also in trouble because the people have promised him and they're not keeping their promise. And since from that time, from year 2000, Zimbabwe was never the same. Mm. Because he pushes now. He doesn't care about what they're doing. That's, that is why he has used the so word. So you're that, saying that he was provoked and therefore. Yeah, he, he was provoked to, to and, move and, that and line. And we'll test whether those laws yeah. or policies will remain, uh, and mm -hmm. especially whether concessions that investors generally would have. They'd want to dictate terms before money or uh, uh, infrastructure and technology is invested. But, uh, Commissar, please hold the thought. So we have Isaac in Durban and Gladys in my hometown in Springs. Hello, Isaac. Hello, my sister, how are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking, and you? Yes, uh, I'm very happy, I'm very happy, my sister, for what, what God has done for us in our nation, Zimbabwe. Mm. Yes, I'm here in Johannesburg, I'm not in Deben. Uh, I just want to, just to, to, uh, to put on my view, you know, this, to, for us to come into this situation where we are today, I believe this situation we come into it after we have changed our national anthem to from worshipping God to worshipping the blood of the people. So I am just asking that if it's possible, the, anyone who is going to into power must restore our national anthem, whereby we'll be worshipping God every day, everywhere in our nation, because Zimbabwe is a Christian nation. Mm. So God is the only one who has brought us where we are today. So 
this is all on my, my, my only... Yes, as uh, I can uh, all believers say amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Gladys and Springs, good evening to you. Hello. 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 Right, Yo, I'm so glad that Mugabe finally has resigned. Mm. You know, this man has put us into a situation that we can't even control. We made us to travel from our country to different to different worlds. We even don't know our relatives, and most of us are just staying all over the world. Zimbabwe is scattered. I don't know. I'm praying that God may intervene that this Zimbabwe is going to be a better, a better place, a better country. We are just praying that these new people who are going to leave this Zimbabwe to change things in a better way. Yeah. You know, myself, I even come with my children here in South Africa because school fees, everything in Zimbabwe was very critical. Mm. So we are just waiting for the best. I'm asking people of Zimbabwe to pray. So that God will put proper people on this leadership. Amen, Gladys. Thank you. Thank you so much. You, she sounds like she's in, in a hurry to pack her bags and, and return home. Tando in Cape Town, good evening to you. Hi, Tando. Hi, Cindy. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm good. Cindy, um, I'm very happy for Zimbabwe and actually I'm a South African. Mm. Um, one thing that is concerning me is the gentleman, I believe, that is going to take over from him, he's been with him for, for quite some time, if I'm not mistaken, I think in the 1980s. Now, my question is, is he going to do the same thing that the gentleman was doing? Because remember, he's also a, 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 a freedom fighter there. And uh, he's, he, he, where he's going to be now, the, the war veterans put him there. My question is, if is he going to sit down with the opposition parties and give the win for the Zimbabwean? That country is a very rich country, and that country is a very beautiful country. And the people of that country, they are very clever. They can empower themselves. So I'm just waiting for this transition uh, <coughs> government to, to, to be, to, to, to be uh, established and then see the way forward. Yes, for now, we are happy that the, the, the big guy is gone, but remember... The guy has done so very much for that country. Mm. But now, whatever, whatever he has done is just water under the bridge. Tando Siabongaga Kulu calling us from Cape Town. We have Changarai, I believe, in uh, Cape Town or Western Cape. Hello, uh, Changarai. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? I'm good, and you? And it's not Morgan Changarai. No, 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 no. <laughs> just, just checking. <laughs> Changarai is almost the same. <laughs> oh, all right, sir. And uh, what are your thoughts today? Uh, as far as I can see myself, uh, it's a good move that Mr. Uh, Mugabe has done to the Zimbabweans. Uh, it's something that everyone across the world has been waiting for, and uh, the world is happy. I just want to thank God for this opportunity, and I just hope the people who are going to lead the people of Zimbabwe, they are going to do it in uh, such a way that everyone will be happy and free like the way Zimbabwe was before. Changarai, I think uh, uh, our sentiments as well, we share uh, your views that uh, hopefully this is indeed a new beginning for Zimbabwe uh, to reclaim its place uh, to its former glory. We'll take a quick break. Do stay with ANN7 Prime as we reflect and analyse this current situation in Zimbabwe. If you've missed it, President Robert Mugabe earlier tendered his resignation, which was uh, confirmed by the Speaker of Parliament in Zimbabwe, effectively ending his 37-year reign. For now, we'll take a break. We'll see you shortly.